On the breakfast, the official foreign exchange receipts from crude oil sales has been depleted from over $3.0 billion monthly in 2014 to $0 today, it's according to the CBN. Uh, what does this mean for an oil producing economy like Nigeria's? Also on the breakfast, Ministry of Finance budget and national planning denies allegation of budget padding leveled against it. And we have a usual newspaper review segment going through the newspaper headlines, analyzing the biggest stories of the day. All right, we're back with the Breakfast of Plus TV Africa, just uh, trying to get some coffee into my system so we can have a good show. Mercy, very good morning to you. Morning to you. Interesting. It's a beautiful day. I hope you've had your, your, your morning tea and uh, we're ready and set to have a fantastic show today. We have interesting conversations ahead with uh, an interesting lineup of guests. So we implore you to sit down, relax and enjoy the show. My name is Kofi Bartels. I As am Messi Eboko. Yes, indeed. As usual, we start with our top trending segment. Uh, uh, we usually look at the top trending stories on social media. We bring them on TV. Look at what Nigerians are talking about, look at what the world is talking about. The first one um, is another market fire. I mean, this year has been a year of fires. I remember in Port Harcourt, they had several fires back to back to back. It was almost as if something was wrong. You know, they began to say, maybe we need to have a, go and ask God for mercy. Maybe we've done something wrong. Uh, in Lagos, we've had no less than three market fires you know, this year. Um, this time, we're looking at Onicha, main market. And this is um, a very popular market uh, for anyone who has traveled through Onicha, at least moving from east to west, uh, uh, east to western part of Nigeria by road, like I've done a number of times. You would uh, be familiar with the Onicha main market, or like some of my friends would call it Onicha main market. Um, so so it, it's unfortunate. It's a very important market, not just in Anambra State, but in Nigeria, um, as far as the economy of Nigeria is concerned. We hear, uh, some people call it the biggest market in West Africa, the, but the fire we, we, we had was, was raging. Uh, it tore through a section of the market. It's not the first time this year that we've seen something like that happen uh, in, in that market. Um, uh, uh, some sources quote the uh, some traders in the market saying that uh, uh, two blocks of fire had been got at a time. Reports, you know, got to the press. A section of the market known as Kano Street uh, is what we are talking about, where the fire affected. Um, yesterday morning, we hear that a number of state fire service were there. They tried to extinguish the fire, but the fire refused to go away. Um, you know. The fire service in Anambra State are saying that they were promptly at the scene. Immediately, they got the alert that the fire was on. It started about 1 a.m., according to the fire service, and they quickly got there. Um, so far, the, at the time the report was being filed, they had gone to refill the fire trucks with water. They had done that twice, you know, two times with water. And uh, the third time, they went to fill the trucks with water, uh, and, well, the fire was too was too big for them to handle, it seems. But you can see the fire service, you know, the firemen trying their best. Sometimes you can you can blame them because they just do what they can with the resources they're given. But this isn't the first time the Onicha, a section, let's call it, of the Onicha main market has been guarded by fire in recent months, and it's really a sad one. Well, and, and that's very true and correct. So it brings us back, to, you know, to the conversation of what we actually learn uh, from time to time when it has to do with the fire. Now, I remember vividly that there was a report from the Anambra Fire Service. He said that it recorded a total of 114 fire outbreaks, which resulted in 15 deaths and five injuries across the state in 2021. And so uh, fire incidents are no longer, um, you know, strange to us in our country. It has become you know, part of the system that every other time there's fire. But one thing about this is that uh, we're, we're excited that, you know, no life, no life was actually lost, although you have uh, properties according to the report, um, you know, what millions that have been lost. But as long as there's life, there's hope. 
but I think that, you know, we, we need to also look at what the functions of the fire service is, even though it's also highly dependent on the government. And so one of you, you begin to say that, um, should we begin to think that the, you know, um, function of the fire service is just limited to rescue operations. It goes beyond rescue operation and it's important that we prevent because prevention is part of it. As much as we tackle the fire, prevention is part of it. So yes, it's, it's almost about where, about the time where you have a lot of fire incidents because usually at this point, so it feels like a seasonal where you have fire outbreaks in different parts of the country. And at this time, there's also going to be, you know, a lot of fire outbreak. But it's expected, we expect that, you know, the fire service across, you know, different states of the Federation will step up to her responsibility of ensuring that um, the populace, the people are educated on the danger of fire and how to prevent it. So we don't even have to get to a point where we're talking about rescue, education, sensitization. Uh, that's what it should be. That's it. So uh, if we're big on educating the people, talking about it, creating awareness, what people need to do, the practices, behavior, and what have you, then it would actually go a long way in helping us getting to this point. So we prevent the issue. I mean, in medicine, they'll say it's preventive medicine. It just prevents us from getting to the actual problem. Right. It's unfortunate, but I hope that we can do better. Uh, and that's what it is. It's also commendable that, you know, from the report, that the fire service, uh, as soon as the call was put across, you know, to the fire service, they responded, you know, talking about uh, a response time, it was really adequate. And we hope that that happens. But we're saying that if um, we have to be progressive, if we have to be, if we have to move forward, then we need to um, do a lot of prevention, preventives, so we don't have to experience the fire. Yeah, indeed, Mercy, you, 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 you said, oh, you know, prevention is better than cure, uh, like we see in this part of the world. I mean, um, Olicha market is said to be one of the, you know, richest in, 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 in Africa. You know, some of the statistics, you wonder how they come by them. But uh, the annual volume of trade in Olicha market is said to be in excess of three billion U.S. dollars. You know, I'm sure that um, if you look at the tax that is collected uh, on a daily basis from the market, we're talking about, uh, you know, hundreds of millions of Naira every day. Uh, that being said, when you look at these markets around, not just Lagos um, uh, or Onicha, rather Nambra State, but you look at markets in, in Lagos State, which is commercial hub of Nigeria, and other parts of the country, you, you would, would want to see a commensurate uh, investment in these, in these markets, uh, commensurate investment in the market, at least let's see that if they're paying monies to people in the market, to market leaders who are there to and transmit some of these monies to the government of the day, there should be a, a, a program to upgrade these markets, to make sure that they look like markets we see in other parts of the world, you know, invest in the markets. You're making money, hundreds of millions every day from markets in Lagos, in Onicha main market, to make hundreds of millions of naira every day in pay for this one, pay for that one, pay a container of loading fee. You know, they pay for all these things. So why can't you as a government, it's state government in Lagos, state government in Anambra state, you know, why can't you say we're going to have a standard fire fighting station in the market, in the market, all right? We're going to have a standard fire fighting station in the market, not down the road, not the next nearest point, no. In the market, these guys are going to be there two, four, seven. They don't need to wait for anyone to come from far. Number two, why can't they build fire hydrants, all right? Have, have water in the market, have fire hydrants all over the place. So these guys don't need to go back and fill their trucks. You see, the firefighting uh, chief, the head of fire service in Anambra said, or in Onicha said, uh, uh, they had to fill, at the time the press was interviewing him, they had gone to fill their truck the third time. You know, that, that shows to an extent, maybe may give an indication of why they found it hard to put that fire out. That may give an indication of why they found it hard to put that fire out. So they went to the one truck, one truck, finished, exhausted the water in, went to refill, came back, second one, exhausted the water, went to refill, came back, third one, exhausted the water with all the money they're making from these markets, can't they put a water 
system in that market and then have fire hydrants at different points. You know, we do things haphazardly. You know, we just have people build shops and do everything. It's all scattered. You know, why wouldn't fire destroy things? You go to Balungu Market here, where sometimes you want to get my stuff on a cheap. I go there, Messi. You you have to wait through. Sometimes you can't even get network. Nalai, <laughs> Messi Nalai. Okay. <laughs> Messi does not go to Balungu Market. Okay. okay. You, you can't I, even I get like, network. I, I like how you. You know, <laughs> is it a lie? It's true. Okay, I'm sure the camera guys and the no, guy. No, you know but, but to be very Messi, honest, if, if yeah, we talk you, about you, you, so, you, you so can't just land. You, you can't even get network at Balogo Market. Messi, sometimes if you go to Balogo Market, it's just, not even Balogo Market. Just, just tell your people. Just yeah, okay. Just tell your people. You're not going to be able to get me for the next uh, 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 two, three, or four hours. You'll be hustling for your things and arguing with the traders. So the point I'm making is, we need to see government putting in commensurate investment, investment into these markets to build proper markets, pull them down, build proper markets, make sure it's well planned and arranged so that fire will not find it easy to jump from one shop to the other. Okay? And it's an unfortunate, uh, Kofi, I mean, really, it's really an unfortunate, you know, scene. I have been, I visited, you know, a scene where fire happened. And it's very emotional. Okay, you've, been, you've been around the market, right? Yes, I've been mm -hmm. around the market. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily maybe in Lagos, but I've been around the scene where um, a fire happened. Is it Rua what? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's a Kaikaukwa. <laughs> oh, my, my good old guy. I, I, I love them. And it, it, yeah. it's, you know why I say it's emotional? Because you would see people, people have lost a lot. It's a very, it's an emotional scene to be in. You know, you know a market was one of the most planned markets in this country. They planned, they planned, I've been going there since I was a child, it's in Calabar by the way, and they planned that market so well. They had an incinerator. When I was a kid, one of my uncles would take me to that market, Ikaika Okwa market in Calabar, okay? And I would sit in the car while he, we would sit in the car while his wife goes to buy, to shop in the market. There was an incinerator building, building where they would take the refuse put it inside and burn it. That's how I knew what I No, no, that's history. That was since you, when you enter through the other gate, the main gates, the one main gate, you see a building. You know what? Nowadays, what they use it for? Last time I checked, they've turned it into a shop and they collect rent from people to sell you, there. I'm, I'm not sure you want, you. if you visit right. that market, you probably might be traumatized. It was well planned. When, when I was you, a kid, you, that market You, you had, might be traumatized. And that was really, so my point yeah, is, yeah. It, it's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. I understand that the people need to work you know, um, it's okay to say, yes, people are making a lot of money from the market, revenue generation, but we can't continue like this. I mean, for me now, and it feels like every other time you hear about a fire incident, we should just relax. And maybe you should just say, okay, well, it's one of those things that happen. But it's unfortunate because if you, you're not talking about the loss of life, you're going to be talking about the loss of properties, what millions of naira, and you don't want to be around that scene. People have lost their livelihood. Some of these persons have even cash, physical cash. In those shops? Yes. They can crush your cash. I'm not even that, joking. Coffee, keep, I'm keep, not even joking. You know, you know so but that's the case. It's unfortunate. But the, mm. the issue is, we, we, we need to, you know, get back to the root. And if you have issues occurring over time, over and over, you have an occurrence, then what do we do? Messi, How do we Messi, prevent this, it? This guy, because this, we need this to guy get to a point spend, where we look at yeah. prevention. We, we need to stop it. So what are we learning? Yesterday, you one have of, fire outbreak, 140, uh, 141 or thereabouts. Yeah. Yesterday, one of the, the traders was telling me, because we had um, an, an argument, not an argument, a debate, you know, as to whether the markets were shut down in Lagos on Saturday, when I showed you Bola Tinubu, uh, the yellow way of um, Baramatu Kingdom. Uh -huh held uh, his uh, homecoming presidential campaign rally at uh, Slim Balogo Stadium. Some are saying markets were ordered to close down in Lagos. The others are saying markets are not ordered. Let's leave that for another day. But one of them was giving his own, his own uh, experience. He said in the market where he operates in, in Lagos State, to get his container in, he has to pay some money to offload his container to the, to the market union. You know, maybe some agueros around. To offload his container, he has to settle people and he has a fee. There's a standard market fee he pays apart from settling agbarus to offload the container. They'll come and stand there. Where's the money? So so these guys go through a lot on a daily basis to just to do business, mm. to to just to survive. And their contribution to the economy cannot be understated. Oh, okay, so course. now if you are getting these amounts from them as government, what are you giving them back? 
in return as services. That's, that's a very, all the government is meant Kofi, that's to a do. very valid question. That's but all the government is meant to do. So the government of, government of Anambra State needs to wake up to its responsibility to say, we're making money from these market, a market in Onicha that, that has a volume of trade in excess of $3 billion annually, all right? And there, there's a lot that goes out of the system that we don't even calculate. What are we going to give back to them? So that what the government of Anambra State needs to do. Well, we, we can also not overemphasize the fact that the function of the fire service is not limited to rescue operation. We need to get to the point where we ensure that, you know, there's uh, we preventive. Let's, let's think about that. If we work on that, maybe we might not even be, you know, in that situation where we talk about the fire. But quickly, Nigerian issues travel advisory to Nigerians going to the United States, United Kingdom and Europe. And, and, and that has been... Uh, you know, that has gotten a lot of Nigerians talking because the federal government seemed to be very concerned as she has advised. I like to say she <laughs> every other time. We hear that, you know, countries are We're not, not dragging. <laughs> you, you can't, you can't ask and have you the don't government. Say she. You, you so, guys can have the government. We're not dragging you. You guys okay. can have it. We so, dash you. <laughs> So um, yeah. you, the advice has been put out to Nigerians. I mean, I'm really shocked because when I started the story, I'm like, oh, really? That's very interesting. But I hope there's no uh, kind of sentiment. There's no emotions around all of this. Because if you talk about advice, and you know the recent one and how we have reacted over time. But let's quickly get to it. It's that uh, Nigerians have been advised, uh, you know, tr those who are traveling to the United Kingdom, the United States, and America, and some other country in Europe, have been asked to be security conscious following you know, the issue of thefts. He said that it's worried about the rate Nigerian travelers have lost, you know, cash, international passports, and their belongings in two countries. And so that's why, you know, this is coming out. And Lai Mohammed, of course, in an event, you know, put that out. I'd like to quote this. He said, most, the most recent victims of this uh, travelers to the United Kingdom, most of whom are disposed of their belongings at highbrow shops, just like, you know, you talk about Victoria Island, now you're here, and then all of a sudden uh, that happens to you, particularly in High Street of Oxford. This is not your typical travel advisory issuing, such is within the rights of the embassies and high commissions as well as the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. But I just said it's merely a piece of advice to Nigerians who may be visiting the affected parts of the world. Mercy, it's uh, <laughs> it's interesting. Why not? Um, so it, this this you know some people say travel advisory. It's not uh, travel advisory because you issue a travel advisory, you know officially you issue a statement. People can go to government website and see it there. Uh, but this was um, like you said, the minister giving a speech uh, or giving um, uh, sorry uh, addressing the press. Okay, on the scorecard. Uh, of the administration of President Mahmoud Buhari. This is the fifth edition of the PNB administration scorecard series in Abuja. Okay, and he said that it's come to the attention of Nigerian government, the Nigerian travelers to US and some countries in Europe are, are having their belongings, especially money and international parcels stolen at the heritage. So, um, I don't know, is this, is, this, is this the case of people reported to him? Maybe they have. Uh, maybe they've been getting reports, and it's okay to advise. But should it come in in a in a, in a, in, a, in such a press conference alone, or such an event alone? Can there be a, an advisory issue to Nigerians, not just from the Ministry of Information, uh, uh, you know, portals, you know, social media handles and the website, but from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs? Very important because Nigerians who are traveling should and are expected to always refer to. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, website and online platforms. I mean, uh, so so is this? If this is if it is this important, why hasn't the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria put out an advisory, official advisory, uh, on all its? Are you saying it's not important? No, I'm saying if it is this important, why haven't they put out a, an advisory, an official statement, out there on the places that people who are traveling to other parts of the world, even on Nigerians, will go check. You know, if, if I were an American, you know, I would be checking the American, you know, uh, Department of State website to, you know, states.gov.us or something like that to, to know what to do. I'll be looking at their, to be getting alerts, you know, COVID is out there. There's some things that are out there, you know, but if you just give a statement, I do not know. I'm just conjecturing here. 
uh, if it's not on, on a website somewhere I can go to, then it is what, I mean, if it's important, you must make a statement of it. Okay, that's number one. Number two, um, is, this, is this in reaction to, um, uh, you know, the advisories <laughs> that the US, the UK, and other countries have issued? So, okay, let's also do them. Do as me, in, I do let's you. pepper them. As <laughs> they sweet us, they paint them. No, as they it, paint them. But, but you know, pe coffee, pepper in the them. Local Local you know, so, so it is, it's like do yeah. me, I do you. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, okay. So is this a do me, I do you case? You know, that's another question I'll ask. Um, no, the third question is this: Is 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 are Nigerians facing a, a better situation in the country? You know, if you're saying that oh they're having their their money stolen and all that, uh, because the, they they would also want to ask ask the government how far have you fed in protecting us in, at home? How far have you fed? In making sure that our belongings are safe, how far have you fed in making sure that we are not kidnapped? All right, mm -hmm. how far have you fed, have you fed in making sure that our children are not kidnapped, you know, um, and killed? We saw what happened in Port Harcourt recently. I'm not saying Lai Mohammed is in charge of security, but as Minister of Information, when you say stuff like this, we will also say, you know, are you protecting us uh, as a government, uh, securing us? Are they, you know, uh, looking after our welfare? Uh, these are the questions to ask. But if this is the case then people should be careful they should be careful but why do we have no, but, but you know see uh, the statement. issue of being careful it's generic because uh, there's no society where you get to i mean there's no country that's perfect or there's no country that exists without you know crime and pickpockets and what have you the issue of thefts so it's, it's, it's just a generic situation as much as you be careful in your home country it's important you're careful yes, outside yes. Uh, that, that's what it is but you know you have raised very valid questions if that's really important but of course the minister stated clearly that it's just you know mere advice and not necessarily um that advice but, but Messi, it, 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 so, so some of these things it, it seem to trivialize the important things that we're talking about when the united states issues, issues a travel advisory they're not talking about you know this is a statement they're not by, talking about generic issues yeah this is a, a, sta a statement by the ministry it's not travel advisory, but this is a statement by the minister of information of the entire country that's going to go around the world and you're advising people, you know, that about pickpockets. You're advising people about, um, uh, you know, you know, petty, petty theft and petty robbery, which are global, global issues. issues. I mean, everywhere <laughs> in, in Johannesburg, in, in New York City, in, France. In, in, in Paris, in, in, in Brussels, you know, in London. I'm sure you have people, even the locals themselves who are being so so. These are ordinary things. So they're picking people's pockets. Are they, are they targeting Nigerians? Is it happening on a larger scale than normal? Is, is that an unusual situation that you have to evacuate? I mean, I, I, you know, let's not trivialize issues. Let's not, let's, not, let's not trivialize these things. You know what I'm saying? That's, so, but, that's but until, we, until we get to be, we need to move on so we can, I mean, you know, quickly uh, move to other issues. But until we get to a point where we have uh, those who are in the political class who care really about the people, because we see the body language over time. Every other time a Nigerian is affected outside of Nigeria, just like you know, Kofi had mentioned, the, there would be question whether or not we have better treatment in Nigeria or whether we're treated well. And you begin to ask yourself, what's the essence of all of these exodus? Why are people really moving away from their hometown? So um, up until we get to a point where we have um, selfless politicians, those who seek political office, not for political gains, but for the people, and that's when we'll begin to have, you know, a different attitude and not really have this. Because at the end of the day, it just looks like, you know, you're just trying to trivialize the issue. And maybe it's like a revenge, you know, just do something. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's quite a situation, Mercy. Um, we, need, we can do better. <laughs> we can do better. Let, let's take a break. Um, we'll be right back. I'll just continue sipping my coffee. And when we return, of course, uh, we'll look at what the papers have to say. Stay with us. <laughs> 